It's Saturday, folks. So what do we normally do on a Saturday? That's right. I normally bring you along on a cooking journey and we're at it again. We're geared up, ready to do a Rogan Josh. But this time it's not gonna be exactly traditional because we're gonna be using beef. And it's not often you'd find that in India, maybe in Pakistan, but not in India. Uh, but doesn't matter because we're doing it British Indian restaurant style so we can put any meat in there that we want. So to run you through the list of ingredients, we have uh, two Asian bay leaf, a few pieces of cassia bark, some fennel seed and the seeds from one black cardamom pod. Then we have a red pepper and a medium sized onion. And in here we have a teaspoon of coriander seed and cumin seed which we're gonna toast and then crush with the pestle and mortar. Over here we have a nice dollop of garlic and ginger paste. And then on our little plate we have some mixed powder, a little bit of extra hot chili powder, some garam masala, some paprika, pinch of salt, good helping of salt actually, uh, pepper, pinch of pepper, and the salt is there in the middle if you can see it. And then over here, because we're making a Rogan Josh, we need some tomatoes, so I've got some cherry tomatoes over here, and all I've done is whack them through the blender, and then I've chucked on top a good teaspoon of Kazuri methi, aka fenugreek leaves. And then over by the sink, I've got some basmati rice soaking. We'll cook that up after I've done the dish, and then we'll take a few shots of the finished article. So the first job for me is to set up the tripod, get out the pans, and fry off the steak while we start with the rest of the curry. Now all the kids are at home so chances are you're going to hear their massive gobs at some point in this video so you'll have to bear with. So I think that's a good enough position for us to capture all of the action. Looks good enough to me. So what I'm going to do is bring down a large frying pan first. We're going to turn that on and we're just going to toast the coriander and the cumin seed in order to crush that. And at the same time, I'm going to bring down another pan, which is going to be this little beauty. And we're going to cut, come on, there we go. We're going to cut and fry this beautiful, beautiful looking rump steak. So first thing we're going to do is put an extra cutting board down on top of this one because we'll be preparing vegetables in a moment. There we go, that's one of them ripped open. And this is two. So we've got this steak in to actually have our steak but uh, I don't see us getting to it in time. So we're gonna go ahead and just dice it up. This knife's got a little bit of coriander on it, which isn't a problem. Oh, I forgot to mention the coriander when I was running through the ingredients. So there is some fresh coriander over there. What I like to do is buy it in bulk and then freeze it these days. So just pull it out of the freezer and chop off what you need, which is why there's some coriander on the knife and then also there is a little bit of Greek yoghurt you can use natural yoghurt but uh, it's the same thing it's just happened to be Greek yoghurt that we had so that's what we will be using so that's the first lot of steak in there just quickly rinse my hands as we're ready now to put the spices in. Just let those toast off slightly. 
And by the time I cut this second steak, I think our spices will be toasted. There we go. So, I'm not going to time lapse any of this. It's all done in real time. So you can see exactly how we go about making a delicious curry like this. The only thing I'm not going to film is the preparation of the rice. Oh, that smells good, that does. I think we're about there. So we'll take these off the heat. We'll swap the pan over and we will put our beautiful, but we'll try and get this, try and get this on camera a little bit because it's, oh, the smell of this is amazing. But there we go, we'll get our toasted spices in there and we will give Give them a crush. You know what, I'm juggling a little bit here, aren't I? So, let's do that. Let's pull back out. And let's get, uh, let's get these spices crushed. I'm just gonna put some extraction on it there. Oh my gosh. And when you do this, when you toasted them, you get a little bit of smoke out of the spices as soon as you've started to crush them. And the aroma is unbelievable. What comes out of the spices. So there we go. It is really, really good stuff, folks. Really good stuff. Okay, so we're approaching four minutes in. What we're gonna do now is get this pan back on the heat. We'll light this one back up. Get a bit of a spatula out. Turn the steak. There we go. So the first thing we need to do is add some oil to the pan. That's a generous helping. Non-stick pan for cooking curries, of course, folks. And then we're gonna have cassia bark and the bay leaf. Now, something else I forgot. I need to go and get some mix, uh, some base gravy out and heat that up in the microwave as well for this recipe. I always seem to forget this. So here's the base gravy straight out of the freezer, frozen. We're going to pop it in the microwave. We're going to thaw that out and then we're going to get it in a pan on the back of the stove and uh, get it up to temperature as quick as quick as possible because I, like I said I forgot to do it so anyway there we go and then we've got the cardamom pod and the fennel seed we'll just reduce that heat a little bit and then we're going to stick in our onion. <laughs> so what I like to do is quickly dice the onion and then in order not to burn the spices it's the onion that's going to bring the temperature down in that pan you see. You can have all these readily diced and prepped if you like but I think I'm quick enough quick enough to get it all going uh, on the fly, if you know what I mean. And then the same with the red pepper, we'll just chop him in half, de-seed it, and then cut it into squares, and in that goes to the pan as well, just like that. This is proper cooking folks, isn't it? 
proper cooking. Need to get myself a Saturday morning TV show. I think it's pretty therapeutic as well if you're talking about the recipe that you're preparing. It kind of helps you me memorize the process a little bit, you know, so you know exactly what you're doing and when you're doing it. Oh, look at that. That's looking good. So this pan could do with being a little bit hotter to seal this meat a little bit better, but that is good enough for now. Right, so we're just going to let these onions simmer a little bit. We'll just put a little bit more of a flame on there. And there is... There is our base gravy. Stand this pan back up. This should just slop out now into the pan. There we go. And then what we're going to be doing is, uh, I'm just boiling the kettle to add a little bit of hot water to that base gravy as well. Uh, because it's in a concentrated form at the moment. And we want to, uh, we want to have it a little bit more, a um, little bit more watered down if you like. So now we're ready to add the spices from the pestle and mortar. They go in on top of the onions. This is the cumin and the coriander. We'll just dash that in. Being careful all the time not to put too much heat into, uh, into the spices. We don't want to burn them. And if they do get a little hot, then it's easy just to Put a little bit of base gravy in, if you know what I mean, just to kind of loosen things up a touch. That's always a good idea. So, just a few minutes now to soften these onions up while we continue to cook the little bits of beef. And now you'll hear the kettle in the background going as well. Might drown me out a little bit. Well, you're either along for the ride or you're not. So we're in for 10 minutes already. I'm not going to edit this. So if this ain't your thing, this, you know, cooking isn't your thing, well, I'll come back on Monday and we'll have another brewery video up. Spot on. Can't complain then, can you, bud? Can't complain. But this is as interesting as it gets for me on a weekend. I mean, today, you'll notice from yesterday's vlog, I have been into work to uh, repair some mindless vandalism that happened in the toilets and also um, put a new stair banister on. And then I did a little bit of work while I was there. Couldn't help myself. And I've done some more work upstairs at home as well in the, uh, in the bedroom with, with the built-in wardrobe. Right then. There we go, that's lovely. So that should now really start to loosen up this base gravy. So I don't have a recipe on my channel for the base gravy, but this is basically a carbon copy of the one from Misty Ricardo. So I don't know if you're familiar with his channel, uh, but it's where I picked, all, picked up all these tips. So as someone I'd recommend that you go and uh, at least check out if not if not subscribe to. So next thing we're going to do is put in our garlic and ginger paste and we're going to wait for that to stop sizzling and then once that stops sizzling we're going to go ahead and add all of the other spices all at once. go. So this is the moment where the pan can get a little bit dry and it's advisable just to just to chuck a little bit of base gravy in there just to loosen things up a touch. 
because you don't want to be burning those spices. But you do want to be cooking them through, of course. And you can see how dry it's gone now. So again, just, just loosen it up with a splash of base gravy. Easily done. There we go. Or you could also add a little bit more oil if you wanted to, if you were that way inclined. So we're just gonna cut these spices out a little bit now. Just let those flavors mingle together. And uh, it's gonna do its thing for a moment. Then we're gonna come in and we're gonna hit it with uh, some tomato and kazuri methi. That's the next major step, if you like. So, I think we're about ready to see this in there. So we'll turn the heat back up, get it going, and then in we go. So you can use tomato paste or blended tin tomatoes for this, or tomato puree, should I say. But we've got loads of tomatoes and I thought I'd go fresh instead. So there we go. And then whilst I've done that, I'm also going to add, I've got stalks in here and coriander leaf. So we'll put the stalks in first and we'll save the leaf for just after we've uh, finished the cup. And uh, we'll kind of garnish with the leaf if you like. So there we go, there's the coriander stalks in. And it looks to me like this meat is pretty much done. It's starting to stick to the pan a little bit, even though it's a non-stick. That's all right though, that'll come off no problem, those juices, the good pans these. Oh, it smells really good. I might just deglaze the pan here as well. So just a little bit of base gravy. Just help things move. Lift all those flavours off the bottom of the pan. Make sure that everything, all the goodness, is in here. I mean, would you look at that? Would you look at that? That really does look like nice, well-sealed beef. And that's going in as well. There we go. So we've got all the ingredients in here now, apart from, of course, the base gravy and indeed the Greek yogurt. I might also come back to this with some more tomatoes at the end, because I've got some. So we'll see how we go. But we'll just get all this heated through. I'm just going to wash a few pots while I'm still here doing nothing. looking good now. So you can see it's starting to kind of stick to the pan a little bit. It kind of gets really, you know, sticky. That's exactly what we're looking for. I want it to start to stick to the bottom of the pan and get a bit crusty. So what we're going to do is when we think we're at that stage, we're going to go in, we're going to hit it with our first proper dose of base gravy. One ladle full, in she goes. So what we're gonna do then is give that a good mix. And then we're gonna let it cook out for two or three minutes to caramelize and crisp up. And while that's happening, I think I am gonna go ahead and I'm gonna chop up the remainder of these tomatoes that we've got over here on the chopping board and we'll add these 
right at the end to give it a little bit of a fresh taste, if you like. A little bit of a fresh note instead of all the tomatoes being cooked through solidly. Maybe not that one, it's a little bit black on the end. But there it goes. Few more, few more to add to the mix, and why not? Because this curry is all about the tomatoes, really, with the rovignosh. So I'm quite happy to chuck these bad boys in. In fact, I might put them in a little bit earlier, just to let them simmer down. Simmer down, boys. Simmer down. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. Oh look at that, doesn't that look attractive? Alright, we've got that on the full heat and we're going to go in now with another addition of base gravy once we start to see this really sear. These pans don't want to stand up today for some reason. Second base gravy addition. Now this one I'm going to leave a little bit longer. So we're coming up to 20 minutes. There's probably another 5 minutes of this video to go and it's basically just additions of base gravy. To, so to spare you the boredom of that, I think it would be wise for me to cut and then come back once I've added all this base gravy. So we'll just have a quick pause of the video here. So we're only a few more seconds ahead. I'm just going to take this opportunity to uh, put the rice on. So we've got some basmati rice and water and I like to just put half a teaspoon or so of turmeric in there and then a dash of lemon juice and a, the same amount if you like a dash of oil and the lemon juice and oil stops it sticking and of course the, the turmeric gives it that lovely yellow hint that you get from restaurant rice. You can add vegetables to it, all sorts of other things as well, but that's enough for me. Right, there we go, look at that, stuck to the bottom of the pan. That's exactly what I'm talking about. This is what we want to see before we go ahead and add the next base gravy. That's absolutely perfect, that is. You can feel the heat just coming off it. There we go. And then once you add the base gravy, the idea is scrape the pan, get those burnt bits off, those charred bits, and get them back into the mixture because they are the flavour compounds that you want in the dish. Bloody lovely folks, bloody lovely. And we'll leave that again. Again we're coming back to another addition of base gravy. I think we're only going to have one or two more. 
but this is really stuck to the pan this time. So normally what we'll do is add the base gravy up to a stage where we've done maybe three additions and then usually the last addition we'll use that to achieve the consistency of the curry that we're looking for. So if it looks a little dry or a little on the thick side then what we'll want to do is just use that last addition of base gravy to loosen it up because of course we're going to be serving this with rice we want to make sure that we've got some sauce to go around and coat all the lovely rice or maybe even a chapati or a naan bread or something like that if you if you're lucky i don't have any of those today it's just going to be the curry and the rice for me but boy that's still a treat there we go so i think now we can just let that uh, Simmer for a few more minutes. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and add the last of that base gravy that we've got. That's all done. And then once this has come down to the consistency that I want, I will be adding a dollop of this Greek yogurt and of course some coriander leaf. And then we'll be serving it with the rice. I'll add those though just before we serve. So I'm going to pause the video now, let this settle, let the rice cook, and then when we come back, we'll be dishing up. see over there we've just taken the rice off the heat so now what I'm going to do is we're going to just add this bit of coriander leaf it looks a bit dark because it has been frozen in fact it looks like spinach doesn't it but uh, it'll have the same effect as fresh it's just I don't make a curry every day so it makes sense for me to freeze these kind of ingredients and then we're going to crack open the yogurt Natural yogurt, Greek style yogurt, low fat yogurt, 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 whatever you like. A couple of tablespoons of yogurt. This will just add a nice sharp bite to the back end and possibly nullify any heat. If there's any heat in there, if it's too hot, yogurt's a good idea. But this is really just to uh, give it a bit of sharpness to exaggerate the sharpness of those beautiful tomatoes there we go so what we'll do is just we'll just put it back on the big ring so this whole uh, dish would have been a little bit quicker if we had proper restaurant burners but this gas hob that we've got at home Whilst it's pretty sort of nifty for like cooking a Sunday roast and what have you, it doesn't quite have the same heat capacity that you'd get in an Indian restaurant uh, or from a commercial commercial stove. So while we're heating that through, what I'm going to do is we're going to take the rice. There we go. This is Abigail's favourite rice, isn't it, chicken? She's appeared on the scene. So we'll kill the heat there. What are you making? I'm doing a curry chicken. So we're just going to dish up. That sounds like chicken curry. It's beef curry. It's so there we go. Curry chicken. So we've got two ladles of uh, rice on there. And then we'll go in probably with the same spoon and we'll do a couple of curry 
on the side. You know what, it's Saturday. Let's have three. And there we go, folks. That there is the finished article. And boy, it looks the part, doesn't it? So it's just left for me to give her a taste. So let's come in with this little spoon that I've got on the side. Bit of the rice, bit of the curry, bit of the meat. Here we go, we'll top. Oh. oh my goodness. You know what? Every time I make one of these, they come out better and better. Mmm. That's epic. Right, folks, I'm going to go and enjoy this. I hope it's entertained you for 20 minutes, half an hour. You know, something a little bit different from the same old, same old at the brewery, which I know you all like as well anyway. But we like to mix it up a bit. Rogan Josh beef curry. Fill your boots.